Kayarne, CEO of the Maria Divi Foundation. And for this session, I'm interviewing Sergei Golubchik, Vice President of Engineering for Maria DB Server. Welcome, Sergei. Thanks. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. So this interview is about the MariaDB 10.7 preview releases, the goals behind them and how it was implemented and what the lessons from them were. Now, I think you are the father of this preview release idea, aren't you, Sergei? Well, I wouldn't say that. There was lots of people involved in well designing and implementing this thing. Uh, so if i don't know if you would think about it as avalanche then i was the one who thrown the first snowball but then it was definitely not only me it was a collective effort okay so you threw the snowball on this one so i will ask you about your role uh, which explains to the audience why you were the one throwing the snowball but let me first set the stage a bit by pointing out our earlier communication on this topic, and by our, I mean Maria Divit Foundation. Uh, so uh, that background is two basic blogs and eight feature blogs on the preview releases from roughly two months ago. Those are not required reading in any way for this session, so you will, you will get a summary of them. Uh, but we will also look at how this experiment worked out, since we now have two months of experience from the preview releases. Uh, the, pre the big picture of the idea was presented in a series of two blogs in September, challenges and visions for MariaDB server and 10.7.0 comes as preview releases. And then we had eight detailed blogs and I will briefly mention them too also for two reasons. So one, we don't want to be too abstract in this session and uh, hence go into concrete issues. But also, while we're at it, we also want to promote the features of MariaDB 10.7, as I think they are quite exciting. So there's eight of them. The first one was UUID data type, and there's a blog about these universally unique identifiers by Daniel Black. Now, number two is natural sort, and natural sort means that a string A10 comes after A9, and not like it would in alphabetical order between A1 and A2. And there's an uh, Anil Husakovich blog on that. The third one is about compression provider plugins, loading compression libraries on request at runtime, and that's by Robert Binder. And then there's JSON histogram, to which I think we will return here. Op there's an optimizing feature, a blog by Vicenzo Ciorbaro. I had the pleasure to write a blog about Python-like string formatting, uh, so that's the S format, curly brackets type of, of uh, string formatting, and that was the fifth one. The sixth is uh, a blog you wrote, Sergei, about convert partition, and that's a convenient and crash safe alter table syntax for partitioning changes. And then there was um, a password reuse check plugin blog, uh, which is about MariaDB forcing new passwords to be new by Ian Gilfillan. And the last one uh, out of the eight blogs was written by Eric Herman, our chairman, uh, miscellaneous features. One of them, he was very much involved in himself. That was JSON equals, so that you can uh, compare whether JSON strings, which are uh, from a literal as, as a character-based uh, interpretation, they might be different from, but from a JSON perspective, they should equal each other. So, so that's it. That, that, that's, that's the background uh, backdrop that we have for this interview. So now let's go into why you, Sergei, uh, is the person that I'm interviewing about these preview releases. So I've always thought of you as a bit of an eminence grise, uh, a great eminence working behind the scenes with, for example, Monty visible uh, to everyone and, and, and highly highly vocal, but you've been responsible for some of the most important decisions since 10 years before MariaDB even started. So, so um, your title is, is uh, Vice President of uh, Server Engineering, but what's your role within MariaDB Foundation? I'm a board member of MariaDB Foundation. And uh, 
what does that mean, for instance, when it comes to code contributions? It has absolutely nothing to do with code contributions. No, I mean, your, I mean, your, your I mean, board role. My, my, in nothing. my role as a board member of Maybe Foundation, I do absolutely nothing with uh, contributions. I did, that but in true, a different but, role. So in what, in what capacity do you, uh, yeah, are you involved in, in code contributions? So, um, well, I love uh, community contributions. I think it's very important for MariaDB to have a thriving uh, de developer ecosystem with developers. And uh, for example, I participated in Google Summer of Code as a mentor since like 2008. But so I always wanted uh, MariaDB well, to support to work well with uh, contributors. And because we are now on GitHub, it was mostly about pull requests. And maybe five years ago or something, that's when I started and it's a rule that every pull request should be answered, well, should get the first answer in within a given reasonably short time frame. It doesn't mean it will be completely accepted within this, but it should definitely get some attention. And there was a set of a procedure a process how to handle them. And we had a dedicated developer, Sergey Wojtovich, who was, well, besides many other things was making sure that every pull request gets a needed amount of attention. And I imagine it might have been not fun every single time, but it worked uh, very well and it paid off. We have number of pull requests, it grew. We got a very active developer community, but that was, and now I don't do anything with contributions at all. It's completely on maybe foundation and maybe foundation developers. So I, I don't. I'll, uh, so what about the similar? Yeah, the, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I, I was going to ask a similar question around your relationship to Linux distributions. Uh, I, I suppose the general tone of your answer will be the same, but I, I'm interested in your personal thinking and yes. your uh, relationship to Linux distributions. Yes, and uh, the answer will be completely different. I don't have. I don't never had any role as far as Linux distributions are concerned. I do occasionally communicate with uh, MariaDB maintainers in various, various Linux distributions when we are discussing uh, distribution-specific bugs in MariaDB or something like packaging, or for example, security issues that security teams in those distributions very much want to know about, but that's it. So I have very little role dealing with. So with all that background, uh, Linux distributions, uh, uh, foundation corporation and code contributions, I think you have a, um, a bit of a challenge uh, answering this question when it comes to what kind of a constituency, constituency you, you, you represent. So I think it's fair to say that you represent both the community, the foundation and the corporation, but what's your take on that? Well, uh... I'm an employee of Marie for Corporation. Uh, they pay my salary, and my goal is to do what's uh, best for Marie Corporation. But uh, so that's. But I uh, deeply believe that uh, having a successful Marie B server project and which is used everywhere and a thriving developers community is what's best for Marie B Corporation. So that's what I'm doing. So there's no contradiction here. I just uh, do what I believe in. So then let's turn to the first blog, the challenges and visions for MariaDB server. So not all of the items in that blog are related to the 10.7 preview uh, releases, but since I have you here available to answer questions, I'd like to ask some uh, things about the other items. And first on that one, uh, continuous integration. So one pain point, pain point uh, pointed out there is the state of the development tree, where we uh, confess that we're not yet in a situation where the MariaDB server tree always passes all tests on all platforms, but we're working on it. So can you comment uh, briefly on that one? Yes, so we used, uh, we used Billboard as our CI and 
for the we have and we have built both networks for like for the last maybe 10 years and for the and recently we've in, we are installing configuring a second billboard a much newer version on billboard.maybe.org which is uh where we change to earn a lot from maybe foundation are working on and the goal is to have this one to use this one in a way that ensures that well the tree is always green that things that breaks tests or does compile never gets even pushed into trunk but we are not there yet we're just it's work in progress mm -hmm. so every developer every contributor should be able to uh, rely on the main development branch to work so that the bugs they uh, encounter when developing is theirs only so when i contribute and i find a bug it's my bug not that of somebody else any any comment on that no besides yeah yeah i agree totally so there's nothing to comment on that good so so then about something that clearly touches more on the 10.7 preview releases we say it's difficult to predict when a feature will be ready users are always asking for three things that are somewhat mutually exclusive features by a deadline without bugs so we will inevitably have to strike some compromise between these three so what's in your mind the right priority order for features deadline bugs well i wouldn't really want to prioritize but i also agree with users we also want features at a right deadline on the right schedule without bugs but yeah but actually but if the feature isn't ready then well it's not ready we cannot uh, i cannot just will it to be ready it still needs time to be well implemented so if it's that's nothing to do about it. if it's not done it just needs time that's that's how it is and uh note that a new feature there might be i don't know tens of hundreds of thousands of users waiting for the new feature but on the other hand there are many has many millions of users and many of them rely on many to being released on a well predictable schedule and uh furthermore it's it's snowballing from there because the, if we don't want to release in time then it will not get into a specific linux distribution and those linux distributions have many, even more even many more users will get affected so that's why we are trying to well by making those choices we're trying to well make it inconvenient for as few users as possible so that basically means releasing on schedule mm -hmm. so so the pain point in agreeing uh whether it's a time based or feature based thing you're saying it is it is uh, time based and and there's there's this analogy some people use about the train model that the train leaves the station and uh, meaning a release is done at a certain time and then the train doesn't wait for individual passengers who who might miss the train uh, meaning some features may be missing so we say that that uh, missing a train is expensive which sounds like a no brainer so why hasn't maria db always done that or has maria db all, all days always done that no we started doing that in the last mm, six maybe years so, so then uh, time-based releases must have some drawbacks so what are those well uh if you use a train model and the train leaves a schedule then you always risk that the train will leave you know half full and if you are particularly unlikely unlucky it might leave even almost completely empty this is not good for the company who's running the trains mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. want to sell as many tickets as possible so then why don't we have more frequent trains can we just not increase the number of train departures i suppose you will say that has uh, drawbacks too yes because well train the train they consume some kind of fuel and they are also not cheap to run and as far in a good going away from train uh back to releases then releasing too often again has its own costs of that's a cost in doing the release that's a cost in maintaining the release so we are trying to balance that so that then gets us to the the uh, 
idea of 10.70 coming as preview releases. So uh, some of those concerns you thought could be solved using preview releases. So let's turn to the thinking from that blog and also from the eight detail blog. So we defined one challenge as making MariaDB mature quicker. So in which way was the experiment with several parallel preview releases of MariaDB server 10.7 um, addressing this challenge of making MariaDB mature quicker? Well, that was, it was actually addressing it on many different levels, but for example, so how we did it before, we had our feature branches that when features already got merged into the trunk, then we released the trunk as MariaDB something alpha version. And then it's over the series of releases, it gets matured until it gets well production quality. And the risk always is that there's some particularly unlucky, bad designed or buggy feature. And the whole trunk can mature only as fast as the worst feature in the trunk. And so now with the preview, what we did with preview releases, we released a preview binary from every feature branch without merging it into a trunk. And then there were six weeks of internal testing to see how good the feature is and to somehow get a feeling of how fast it'll mature. And only after that, after we were reasonably sure that all the, all the, feature, that the feature is good enough, then it gets merged into the trunk and then we release it. Together is one or MariaDB binary with all the features. Mm -hmm. So uh, one reason for doing that is that uh, well, I believe that we uh, uh, there were two reasons for doing that. Then what well, one is the congestion of merge hassle happening just before the release. That's an internal thing. Uh, but then you also mentioned this uh, preventing um, that that if there's one feature that is not good enough, then it's like the, the one bad apple is not uh, contaminating, causing the whole basket to, to rot. Uh, and that would then mean that such features would not make it into the first normal merged release 10.7.1. Was that the idea? Yes, and this has actually happened. One of the features that you mentioned earlier, it did not make into the release because it didn't, well, it didn't pass the quality checks and which actually proves, which it's said and uh, in a sense, but also it shows that we are serious about the quality. And if the feature, even if you has shown the features a preview release, but it didn't uh, make the quality check, then we do not edit to many and so on. It's so only then it, uh, one it was the new chance whenever 10.8 uh, will happen, I suppose. Yes, it's if it will get to uh, minimum required stability level, maturity level, then it'll get into the next release. Mm -hmm. And 10.7.1 uh, has appeared as well. And it was, if I remember correctly, de declared release candidate, RC. Uh, now, what was the logic behind, behind that, such an early release with, with uh, such a, a mature term? Yes, because we skipped alphas and we did Review releases, they went out with basically alpha quality. Although as later testing has shown, they were much, many of them were better than alpha. And then we've spent uh, six weeks for every feature on internal testing and we found and fixed uh, no less than 50 bugs in all those features before adding them to the trunk, which was pretty much equivalent to what we had before on all those life cycle from alpha to beta and over to RC. So that's why the features that were added to the trunk and to the RC actually, they were much better than we usually push into the trunk, much more stable, much more mature because of this not uh, random testing in the wild, but actually targeted, targeted testing per feature. And those bugs, that we found there are bugs that were ne never present in any of the releases, the bugs that none of our users will ever have to face. And the result we 
thought that the, the server is mature enough to be, well, close to what we could release as production. That's why it's called release candidate because it was a candidate for that release eventually. Okay, so so I think that's that's the logic behind 10.7.0 and 10.7.1. So it seems like you're quite happy about how the experiment worked out. Is is that is that the case? Yes, I think in my opinion it went pretty well. Lots of bugs were found. Uh, features were that got pushed were much better than well in previous MariaDB releases. Uh, that got pushed merged into the trunk. They all got go to the same, they all got to be production quality by the time of the J release. But this time, but this time we can get to J much sooner because of this restructuring of efforts. And so yes, I think it was working pretty well. Excellent. That's that's good news. So, anything else you you wish to highlight on ten point seven? I mean, what's your favorite feature in ten point seven? Or do you have one? Mm, well, of course, for me as a developer, favorite features would be features I was personally involved in. I think the one that I like the most is it's not very visible to users, but it's the one with provider plugins, because we always had this, say, dilemma. So we had a numerous uh, compression algorithms inside the server for InnoDB, for, well, earlier in for TokyoDB as well, for Marunga, and for RocksDB. And the problem is that pretty much no user in the world, or almost no user, would need to use all of them. But on the other hand, there are definitely users who use every single one of them. So we cannot remove any of them because some users will, will be affected. But no user needs all of them. But on the other hand, because of this, because we have to ship them all, every user will need to install all the libraries for all the compression algorithms one will never ever use. And this is pretty much sounds like an unsolved problem, unsolvable problem. And in 7 we have solved it. That's what I like about solving and that's a good story problem. and that's a good solving reason why it's problem. yes. No, I was just saying that solving and, and it's a good reason problem for to be nice. your favorite or favorite uh, feature. It's not just because you yourself were were involved. So that's the good one. Hey, uh, anything more you you wish uh, us to say on ten point seven or the release model? No, wait for the next release. We hope it'll be good enough to be great. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Sergei Golovchik, for this. Thank you.